All right, so I wanted to make a video about dogs and what I'm learning. And uh, one thing I really wanted to say. So Brandon Fouché is teaching me this, basically. He's not teaching me personally, person to person, but he's teaching me through example. And um, what I'm seeing is... A lot of it, I started with Caesar Milan. I'm just going to tell the truth about everything. I love Caesar Milan. Um, anything I say about anybody, Brandon Fouché and Caesar Milan are two of the people who helped me the most. And um, they're the people who paved the way for me, specifically in the dog area. Along with everyone else alive who has created anything and all the people who built the world I'm living in, basically, they paved the way for me. So I'm grateful for everyone and everything that has helped me and gotten me here you know I'm living in a place with wealth of knowledge all around me wealth of things all around me and that's because of people who came before me and basically did all that stuff so I will always appreciate that and that being said our job my job people who are alive we're always going to push it forward so we're going to take it to the next level and you know see um, you know continue that that evolution and so, with all that being said, Caesar, um, I want to say just how I got into dogs, and I was always um, just really into something about me. I was naturally born in a way that's like, I want to be the hero, I want to be the leader, I want to be the um, like the war hero, the soldier. That's like kind. Of, I was always, I always loved the hero in the movies, Braveheart, Gladiator. Those were like. You know, that was like who I wanted to be and how I was kind of naturally to my friends at a young age and everything. So that's who, uh, that's what I am like naturally kind of. So not, um, yeah, in, in a positive way. I always wanted to be the good hero, you know, not like a domineering um, alpha, you would say. Not like the big dog. I just wanted to be the hero, the, the good guy, you know. So... Anyway, that's a little about that's enough about that. But so Caesar Milan came along. My heroes were always the dog, or I'm sorry, the animal people, like the crocodile hunter. And this is just you know when you're when you're younger, high school, college. I, I had a young mind for a long time. I was in college acting like a kid, and it's good to act like a kid. But um, some things have changed. But uh, I still act like a kid, which is good. But um, my naturally my heroes, I would always watch Animal Planet, and National Geographic, the lions, the predators, the packs, and my heroes, just like, without even thinking about it, were always like, as a young kid, it was always the heroes and the warriors, but then as I got older and they had came out with reality sh TV shows, it was um, like the Crocodile Hunter and Bear Grylls or whoever, you know, and then, and then of course, um, Season one came out, and then that was like my new hero. So I, that was like I was obsessed with season one. Everything he was saying, I was like, yeah, I felt like he was just bringing the truth to people who um, we have gotten as a society so far away from the truth, kind of at times, you know. Um, that's what I feel like. I mean, you know, depends on the person and the situation, and everything. But um, he was bringing back the side, the natural side that we all kind of know, like the instinctual respect and and energy, communicating with energy, who we really are, and um, not so much words, and so I saw so much truth in that, and uh, so I, anyway, I became obsessed with that, that's, that's, that, and then I started the dog hiking business after college, I could get into all those little details later or something, but um, my, what I want to say is something I'm, I'm learning so here's where I am kind of now. It's always going to change. And my now is always going to be pushing forward and better and, you know, farther. But um, Caesar, a lot of it was like kind of forcing. And I wouldn't say it was a mix, you know. It wasn't like just forcing like I had as an, in elementary school. My mom and teacher would have some sort of relationship and some sort of grading skill because I was the crazy kid that like the teacher couldn't even teach the class or it would be very difficult. And the question was with me was always like, how do I deal with this kid who is like a class clown who just doesn't want to sit still? And I was just like so disruptive and uh, having fun because 
I was being a kid. That's just how I was as a kid. And I see that with the dogs. So that's why I relate to these dogs, problem dogs and things like that. And um, so the question is like, and then I remember how different people would teach, try to teach me, you know. And if, and if someone was telling me, if a teacher was like trying to force me to do something, I'm just going to try to even force farther back. And the reality is I'm not even going to respect that teacher who makes me, who tries to force me into submission. You're never going to respect that. Um, so this plays in so perfectly with all the dogs and everything that I'm doing with my life. Um, because I've been there kind of. Like I've been the problem dog, you know. And I didn't mean any harm. But, but so I, I know what gets respect and what doesn't. And I craved, craved like crazy. I craved role models, especially as I went through puberty and all that and became a teenager and grew up from there. I craved that like hierarchy, that pack, uh, that respect, that role model. My dad was like a great dad and I love him and we have a better relationship now, but he was working so hard that he wasn't really, you know, he was just like working and kind of just not, uh, he was kind of going through his own thing. So that was like not really where I was going to get my hierarchy, my, my like dominant, um, you know, male energy or whatever you would call it. But I know what it feels like, and um, and I know what it feels like. I know what it is. I know what it's not. Um, I'm I'm not saying I know it all. I don't. I absolutely, for sure, don't know it all. But um, so when I see these dogs, um, here's what I want to say. Kind of, I would respect more the teachers who would just kind of let me do what I wanted in a way. But then, uh, but then there was kind of like that unspoken deeper respect. It's almost just like who the person was. Who they just be like. Like, if I crossed a certain boundary, they'd let me know, you know? And they let me know in a way that was, like, not a joke. It wasn't, like, a fake thing either. It wasn't, like, a planned out thing. It was just, like, they would... It's so, it's so, um, like, not... It's so, like, subtle and between the lines that it's kind of hard to explain. But I think most people probably will know what I'm talking about. It might just be... Okay. And you just never... So I went through, anyway, what I'm talking about with the dogs, that's the way to be that I'm, that I'm learning. Um, when you try to force a dog, I, cause I, so when I, now I'll just talk freely. Caesar, the Caesar stuff, a lot of his stuff, like flipping the dogs, that's the equivalent in my mind of a teacher physically putting you and sitting you down in a chair. And you know what I'm going to do when a teacher sits me down in a chair? I'm not going to respect that teacher, and every chance I'm going to get, I'm going to push that teacher's buttons because they're getting frustrated, right? And you're going to keep pushing their buttons, pushing their buttons, yeah, yeah, because in a way it's weakness if they have to sit you down and force you down in a chair. But if they're okay having your freedom, and um, and they, you, pretty much anything's okay, they're not, I think the key word is trying to control. If they're not trying to control you, uh, you're going to respect that teacher more. And um, the same with the dogs. I don't. So this is something I learned from Brandon, and it's kind of already a part of my awareness. But Brandon made it more. Brandon Fouché is what I'm talking about. He made it more very clear uh, because and explicit the way he spoke about it. He just said something on Facebook. I just read. It's like we need to stop trying to control our dogs. It's not about control. It's about letting a relationship develop and having that respect without trying to control. And I could feel it coming from Brandon as a person. It's just a respectable person, something about him as a person, regardless of the action. Because I, when I was working with dogs, starting to work with dogs, it's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I work with people sometimes, just tell me what to do, just tell me what to do, just tell me what to do. And it, it's, it's a lot deeper than that, actually. And um, it's not always so easy because um, it's more like, who do I be? And it's like, oh, man, well, how do I change that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, a lot of that changes from an understanding. Because once you have a different understanding, a different way of looking at things, um, who you are changes, the way you feel or vibrate, whatever you want to say, the way you vibrate, your vibration. Uh, dogs communicate through vibration and energy, whatever you want to call it. So... Um, when the way you feel changes and the, who you are is basically the way you feel on a regular basis. I would, 
in a, in a way. I don't know how to define who you are, but it's not my place to define who you are or who I am. Really, it's just, um, that's a big question. But the way you feel, who you are to your dog, a lot of that is how, how you are every day, the way you feel to them every day, the way you feel internally um, comes out and all those things. So that's what Brandon Fouché has shown me through example, mainly, because like I said, he, just the same way he is with dogs, he's not trying to control anybody, and um, but, but you get the respect, but it's almost like, how do you get the respect? Because you're not even... It's not because you he's doing anything. It's just like you respect him because of who he is. And so that's how I am with dogs. And I just wanted to talk about that. I think that's worth talking about. Being the alpha, it's not like, I am your alpha, damn it. You're going to do what I say. And if you don't, I'm going to get really pissed. And I'm going to flip you over. And It's not about that. Um, you, you, It's okay to, to freak out on a dog. And when I say freak out, I mean like get angry at a key moment. Just the same way as if I mess with a teacher the wrong way as a kid, the teacher might be like, hey! Or they might not have to raise their voice so much, but they might kind of get angry. And anger, you know, if you look at nat nat nature, um, animals absolutely get angry. I mean, like if, they, if a dog comes up and tests another dog in the wrong way, they, they get mad at them, you know? But, um, so... I forgot what I was saying exactly, but um, you can get that respect um, through key moments without, if you look at like a wild wild pack of lions or something, it's not about control. It's like pretty much like, hey, you want to go mess with the, uh, you want to go mess with the scorpion? Go mess with the scorpion, you know? How'd that work out? Oh, it didn't work out so well. <laughs> yeah, you know? Uh, you want to bite the porcupine? Go bite the porcupine. They pretty much just let them, it's not about control, it's not like you will do this, you will not do that. They pretty much go and do what they want and um, and then once they get out of a certain perimeter, the mom might go pick them up and bring them back and bite them on the neck and that's like, don't do that again, you know. But for the most part, you can do what you want and um, so that's a big thing for me that I, that I wanted to share. Uh, it's not about control, it's not about control and that helps you with everything in relationships, everything. Because with people and also, you know, everything. Because it's not about control. You can't control, first of all, you can't control the behavior of another person anyway. But, um, but, but with dogs, it's really on that relationship level. It's, it's about an unspoken respect. And so I want to make videos in the future on how do you get that respect. It's like, okay, great. It's who you have to be. You're talking about who you have to be, not what you have to do. And then how to basically dominate in a way that's not a forceful way, but it lets them know who's who's the more dominant one. And then once they have that understanding, that's the foundation for everything. And then you could add action to that. But that understanding is the basis of everything. And sometimes you will likely have to get that through partially they know because of who you are, your energy who the dominant one is, they're going to kind of check you out. Who's this guy? Okay, he seems like he's could be the dominant one. And then basically, a lot of times, dogs that come into my pack, they don't really know who if I'm dominant or not. For, for It might be the first day, but it might be five hikes in or whatever it is. Until something happens where a dominant alpha, whatever you want to call it, is required to do something. And then I do that thing. And then they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah, I thought it might be the case. I thought he might be the alpha, but now I know. And then basically all dogs at some point or another go through some sort of period, some sort of time where they get a correction from me. And I'm not talking about a physical correction. I might mean just like there's a lot of different things. And this is this is where we could get into different things like how, what am I actually talking about? This is stuff Brandon Fouché to showed me also. A lot of that stuff is from him. Things like chasing a dog. Go on. Get out of here. Move. Go on. Get out of here. Go. 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 You get the dog moving and th th that triggers a feeling in them like, whoa, you know, if you get kicked out of an area, you're not in charge, obviously, you know, and then you could do things like throwing something, 
down near them. Brandon throws like a phone book. You throw the phone book down near them. Hey. Um, sounds kind of funny, but it, but it, but it's true. And um, it's not touching them, and it's not making them afraid. But it's doing a powerful thing, basically, that gets your respect. When we're in the car at a key moment, I might uh, I might bang the side of the, the the door, bang the side of the inside of the van, and say hey in a certain way, and then block a dog from moving with my energy. And I don't touch them, and um, then they're like, okay. But a lot of it is, we could talk about those things another time, but um, I just wanted to share um, that idea. That is that is basically the question, you know, how do you have the relationship? How do you have the respect? Do I force my dog? What do I do? And um, so I just wanted to say a lot of it is not controlling, not controlling your dog, do this, do that, sit over there, do this, da, da, da. A lot of it's like, sit where you want, lay where you want. If you do something I don't like, I'm going to let you know. Um, and um, and a lot of it is a really high level of respect where you're respecting the dog and you're not forcing them to do things. But you are disciplining or dominating when the time is right in such a way that um, that allows the relationship to, to go on peacefully and that you have to do that very minimally. You know, like with my dogs in my pack, they all know that I'm in charge, and they know that they know that I'm not going to make them do anything. They could pretty much I'm here for them. They're they're here to have fun and and just like hang out, and we're all living happily ever after, you know. But um, they do know that when that when I'm needed, I, I am the one, you know. And so uh, that gives a peace, and that's what lets packs function. Um, packs in the wild, you know. We all have um, different ways of organizing ourselves and. Uh, as people, it gets more complicated, but um, but that's all good too as people. But with dogs, they they like having that one, um, and they have the hierarchy too, and the whole hierarchy keeps everything, um, you know, stable. But that's it. I wanted to share that. It's not about control. It's a lot about is a lot of it. Okay, number one, it's not about controlling your dog. Force. It's not about forcing or controlling. Number two. Um, a lot of it is about who you are, not what you do. And number three is a part of, as a little attachment to number two, being who you are. I would say it's about doing less in certain things in key moments and not trying to over control your dog. Um, and just being so much more natural, you know. We try to force everything. We try to this, blah, 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 blah put the kids in the class, make them read this book, they're going to do this or they're going to get spanked, blah, blah, blah. you know, and things are, that's, we're coming out of that, but um, it's not about that, um, in my opinion, and if you look, it's so cool, because if you look at companies, the companies that are becoming less hierarchical, I just watched a documentary on this, the companies that are becoming more free, they flourish, the countries that are, that are, that are more free, they flourish, because freedom um, it works. I was just watching Gore-Tex is a company, Whole Foods. Um, these companies, they allow the, you know, it's not like force, force, you do this, you do that. Everyone gets, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot more freedom, a lot less control and controlling. And, um, and I think there's a really beautiful revolution, not a revolution, but a movement towards that, that basic freedom going on. And, um, and I'm happy to be a part of that, and I'm happy to be a student of it, and um, learn more about it, and hopefully help out people and dogs in the process. And I, again, want to thank everyone who came before me in every walk of life who helped me to get where I am by just opening my computer and reading about it or whatever. And in particular, I'd like to thank Cesar Milan for inspiring me, and Brandon Fouché for really beginning to take me to the next level. People who spent their whole lives with dogs. And then I just get the benefits of that. So it's a beautiful thing. So anyway, I will see you in another video. Thanks.